Welcome to StriveScan College Launchpad. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each school will have six minutes to share more about their institution, and they will be around for questions at the end. My name is Danielle, and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so our presenters cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to ask questions at any time throughout the presentation. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com launch. And I wanna encourage you to check back for more programming from the Strivescan College Launch Pad program. All right, we're gonna get started with our first institution. I'm gonna turn it over to the Oregon Institute of Technology. Sorry about that. I shared my screen and then everything kind of disappeared here for a second. Let me pull that up. Alrighty. I hope that looks okay. My name is Willow Charlton and I'm an admissions counselor for Oregon Tech. Sorry about that. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about Oregon Tech. So total, um, our profile and points of pride. So as you can kind of see here, some different points about us. So we have some of the top earning alumni of any four, or not any, but um, one of the top earning alumni um, of many different four-year universities. We're also number one for return on investment in Oregon, which is pretty cool. So we're also rated number two in the nation for return on investment, essentially the money you put down toward your education. Um, also, 96% of our students are employed or enrolled in graduate school within six months. So those are some great things I would definitely say are really awesome if you come to Oregon Tech. Um, and 91% of our undergrad courses have 30 or fewer students in them as well, too. So you can kind of see total enrollment is about 5,000. I know uh, we're a smaller university. I want to say our um, on-campus, main campus, um, basically enrollment is about 2,300. So definitely not over um, 3,000 students. You can see most of our students come from in-state. But some also some key things about us, um, we have 40 plus different academic programs, we have 50 plus different student clubs and organizations, we have NAI athletics as well too, some students get athletic scholarships, and we have two housing options at our main campus located in Climate Falls. So kind of moving on here, you can see Climate Falls is located in Southern Oregon. Um, it's really beautiful area. Um, it overlooks the Cascade Mountain Range of Climate Flakes. So this is actually a view of our solar panels on campus. Um, this is where we offer our on-campus living experience, like I said, at athletics and also our residence halls where students live on campus. It's also solar and geothermally powered. Um, you can see, like I said, 2,300 plus students at this campus. And we're actually known as the city of sunshine in Oregon, which is pretty cool. So we definitely get lots of sunshine. We get snow, um, all of that good stuff. We don't get a whole lot of rain. It tends to be kind of dry and high deserty. Another key thing about Oregon Tech, so our mission, um, we are... Oregon's only polytechnic university, we specialize in STEM. So science, technology, engineering, business management, and I like to say medical for the M as well too. Um, we're also very hands-on. So those small class sizes, I wanna say average of 17 students per class, um, really small, you know, intimate classroom sizes. You get to know your professors, you're learning from your PhD master levels per professors. Um, and we also have a lot of projects and labs that students do on campus. Um, and internships and externships that our students participate as well. So you're going to not only learn the theory behind, you know, what you're studying in your classes, but also be able to apply that here at Oregon Tech. So these are all the different programs. Obviously, not all of them. I have a tech here because we do have a few more engineering programs. Um, but like I said, anything from health, engineering, business, applied sciences, um, we pretty much cover it all. And all of our programs are very, very hands on. We also have lots of clubs you can see here. Um, uh, so lots of different clubs, uh, women in engineering, rainbow owls, cultural clubs. Um, we even have extramural sports if you don't wanna play like competitive sports, but also our NAI athletics. And then we also have some great student led programs like student government, our radio station where you can DJ at, um, our Oregon Tech veterans program and Oregon Tech broadcasting if you're interested in film. Um, we have a lot of students that do projects around campus that help different departments. Sometimes they put on fun little plays and things like that as well too. 
And then these are our first year admissions requirements. So um, basically we look for 15 core subject requirements when you apply for admission. So you self-report your grades, essentially what you received your first year, sophomore and um, senior year or junior year, and then kind of the classes you're planning to take your senior year. So you kind of self-report all those. If you have a 3.0 and no deficiencies in these 15 core subject requirements, you're guaranteed admission. If you have a 2.5 and maybe like a couple deficiencies, you're still considered for admission. So don't consider that like you're going to be de denied if you're missing like a fourth year of math or something like that. Still apply to Oregon Tech. Um, just so you know, we don't require essays where uh, no letter of recommendation are required, um, no second language, no transcript, and more tests optional. So no SATs or ACTs to apply to Oregon Tech. And then the last thing here is our presidential scholarships as well too. So for Oregon Tech, um, we have merit-based scholarships that we award students just based on their high school GPA, SAT, or ACT, just one or the other. Um, we do offer WUI tuition as well too. Um, so definitely check that out online. Um, and basically that's my six minutes. So thank you so much. Feel free to scan the QR code if you'd like to learn more about Oregon Tech. Thank you. Thank you. Our next presenter is from California Lutheran University. Okay, awesome. My name is Chris Davis and I'm an admissions counselor at California Lutheran University. Um, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit today about our university here. Um, so as you'll see here as a quick snapshot, um, we are a smaller private liberal arts college located in Thousand Oaks, California, um, right in between LA County and Santa Barbara County here in Southern California. Um, we do have a pretty diverse campus here as you'll see. So a lot of individuals from different states, um, countries, and also a lot of different uh, religious faiths. Although Lutheran is in our middle name, you do not have to be of the Lutheran faith. Um, us being an HSI institution also is very helpful when it comes to the dynamic of our campus. So a lot of individuals coming from a lot of different places with a lot of different stories. Um, as you'll see here, the classroom size is about 18 to one um, and also with a 14 to one student faculty ratio. So you have access to your faculty members and are also able to engage with them both inside and outside of the classroom. Um, and also too, as you'll see here on the bottom, um, about 97% of our students are either employed or in graduate school within nine months of their graduation. What you'll see here is a little bit um, about our different majors and minors. So we have about 41 majors and 43 minors that undergraduate students can choose from. Um, we have zero impacted programs. And also too, we do have a four to finish guarantee at our university where if you are not on academic probation and signing up for your classes on time, we do guarantee that you'll graduate in four years. Um, if for anything on our end, like we're unable to provide you with a class, um, or we don't have any professors that are able to teach a class, we will reimburse um, the tuition for that semester for you if we're unable to go ahead and get that for you. So it's really great because it allows you to go ahead and get into your field, as I just talked about on that last slide. But also, too, it gives you an opportunity um, to save on costs. So you're not having to pay for any additional years of school when it comes to that as well. Um, when it comes to the different support systems, we do have a lot of different things that students can take advantage of on our campus. So we do have free math um, and writing centers, a lot of different um, academic services and support programs for our students. Um, as I said before, you do have a actual faculty advisor as well as an academic advisor. So you have a lot of individuals that you can talk with, um, not only about your education, but also too about things about life as well. So um, that holistic approach that we have in our admissions office actually carries throughout our entire university. So um, you have a lot of individuals that you can lean on when it comes to career aspirations as well as educational questions. Um, we are very big on the experiential learning at our university. So we do have um, just over about 80 different study abroad opportunities that students can take advantage of. So students are traveling all over the country um, when it comes to these learning opportunities. Um, and it's something that we really encourage um, at our university. Um, 500 plus students have been participating in the past year um, in internships. So you can start that as early as your freshman year. Um, if you'd like to conduct research as well, you can start that as well as early as your freshman year. So um, we want you to grow your skills in the classroom, of course, but we want you to get that um, career learning and grow your skills in your job field as well. So we really want you to go ahead and get that experience here at our university. Um, what you'll see here is we have a lot of opportunities for students to be involved as well. So we have over 100 um, different clubs and organizations. Um, if you feel that our university or the community is lacking in any area and want to provide a club or an organization, um, you have that support, you can go ahead and take that on as well. 
Um, the dorms here at our university are also um, a great amenity. We do have um, the 12th ranked best um, dorms here in California, um, 15 different co-ed residence halls that do have a lot of different options to you when it comes to Wi-Fi, air conditioning, and actually free laundry on our campus as well. Um, we are a D3 competitive school, so we compete in the Division III um, NCAA level. Um, we do have some national championship programs here at our university um, when it comes to baseball as well as volleyball. Um, our facilities are great here at our university as we are the home to the LA Rams and actually a new um, LA Women's Soccer Club and they practice here at our facilities as well. Um, when it comes to the different scholarships amounts, um, we do have a lot of that individuals can actually get here at our university as you'll see on this slide. So um, a great number of our students receive um, financial assistance. Um, we do have a lot of different academic merit-based um, scholarship opportunities. And another one that I think students should take advantage of is this public price promise, where if you're applying to any UC school in California, um, and you get admitted to our university as well as to any UC school, we'll actually um, offer you a scholarship amount in the cost of attendance um, of what UC schools are offering students right now. That's about a little under $29,000. So it's a great opportunity for students to, to get an additional scholarship if they're thinking about applying to any other UC schools um, in California as well. What you'll see here is a little bit of the tuition breakdown and the different costs as well, um, and rounding out of it a little bit um, under that over that 60,000 mark, um, depending on the housing, of course, and if you're living on campus and whatnot. Um, we are a test optional school as well. Um, we do require one letter of recommendation for our students. Um, our application is housed on the Common App. Um, also, too, we have some different um, deadlines when it comes to our admission. So we have an early action. Um, because we're a non-binding school, you do have time to wait and hear back from other schools and also you know, take your time with your process and see if it is whatever university it is you'd like to attend. Um, and then we do have our regular decision deadline as well, as you'll see there on January 1st. Um, if you do have any specific questions or want to get any more information on any other opportunities, um, please feel free to call our office or email this address here and we'll be able to help you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next presenter is from Western, excuse me, Western Colorado University. Perfect. Thank you so much, Danielle. Just give me one quick second. There we go. Hello, everybody. My name is Alejandro Alejandre. I'm Regional Director of Recruitment for Western Colorado University. Uh, Western Colorado University is a four-year public liberal arts institution that's located in the hearts of Rocky Mountain. Just to give you a little bit of perspective of where we're located, we're kind of in the southwest corner of Colorado, three and a half, four hours south of Denver. We're in a very neat location, surrounded by so much beauty. I mean, we have Crested View, which is about 30 minutes north of town. I wouldn't take Crested View as a typical mountain town that has been taken by tourists, but I'll be honest, it is kind of a tourist attraction. We have a lot of gift shops, restaurants, you can ski and snowboard, Mount Crested View. Um, you can also hike, mountain bike, fly fish, a lot of things to do outdoors. Uh, apartments is five miles south of town. It is the largest outdoor recreational area in Colorado. It's over 8,000 acres. And students, that's where your outdoor activities will most likely take place. So anything from mountain biking, hiking, rock climbing, uh, there's over 150 camping sites. If you have a dirt bike, you can ride there. And there's also a shooting range. So it's a definitely a popular spot for all the students at Western. And we also do have Blue Mesa, which is about 10 miles west of town. And it is the largest body of water in Colorado. So that's where, where your water activities will take place. Um, paddleboarding, ice fishing, ice fishing, um, ice fishing, those type of things. So a lot of things to do. Uh, now there's something going on, not just off campus, but also on campus. Uh, you have over 50 clubs and organizations. Those are student led clubs. Those are things that can want to happen and they may happen on campus. So you have your academic clubs the run in conjunction with an academic program. And then you have your passion and interest uh, club, which I would say those are pretty explanatory. Now we do compete in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference at the Division II level. Um, we also have club sports and mountain sports still committed, but they do have a fee that fee just for transportation, paying the coaches equipment. And of course, we also do have intramural sports, something I do recommend joining regardless if you go to Western or you go somewhere else. Now we are, like I said, we are a four year public liberal arts institution. We serve about 3,400 students. 3,000 of them being undergraduate students, 400 of them being graduate students. Some of the programs that we offer 
uh, range from theaters and computer science, art, biology. I would say um, anything with outdoors, we're definitely known for. We are we are surrounded by 1.7 million acres of public, public land. So anything with environmental sensibility, wildlife biology, uh, those are definitely big majors. Also, if you're interested in computer science and mechanical engineering, we do have a brand new building, uh, the Ray School Building for Computer Science and Mechanical Engineering, which is a partnership we have with CU Boulder, where you can complete that degree on our campus, um, and where you can complete that degree on our campus, and you'll be taught from CU professors that third and fourth year, which is, uh, you're going to begin that CU education at a way more affordable, uh, affordable price on our campus. Couple of things, average class size is at Western 16, 71% of the classes are taught by a full-time professor, and 69% of those professors have tournament degrees. Meaning that you're getting taught from someone who can say is an expert in their field, and also someone that's fully dedicated to your education. You can talk to those professors before and after class or during their after hour, which is really neat. And that's actually what we dedicate to. You know, we are fully dedicated to your, to your success. So we offer quite a few programs to help you with that. We offer disability services, uh, which I know the director will work with students, family, uh, coaches if needed, staff if we need to be involved to make sure you have all the resources to excel in college, to, to, to thrive at Western. And, and also we have a math and center, which are free resources for you. And also you'll be assigned academic advisor in your field. That advisor will guide you from your first year to your last year at Western. Um, Cost of tuition, we have low cost, high value. Uh, cost of tuition is definitely below the national average. 80% of the students receive some type of aid and 100% of them are considered for merit aid. So just give you a little bit of understanding of our merit scholarships. Our merit scholarships are upon acceptance and they go off your GPA, that's all. We're test optional one four, so we don't need those for admissions or scholarship purposes. If you have those scores, you can definitely send those to us, but I'll be honest, we're not gonna be looking for admissions or scholarship purposes. Those are going to be all on your GPA. Now, if you're coming from out of state and you do not qualify for a merit scholarship, but you are part of the number scholar, you are part of the central place of the Western Undergraduate Exchange, you'll be able to pay 150% of Western Student State tuition, which is going to save you about $4,100. Uh, for the rest of the scholarship that we offer, you can go to western.edu forward slash aid and you'll see all the institutional scholarships that we offer. Now, in terms of applying to Western, all we need is your application. You can apply to the rest uh, direct, uh, direct application or the common application. Regardless how you apply, we'll definitely need your high school transcripts. There's going to be an application fee of $30. You can reach out to myself or the admissions office and we can give you that promo code to waive your application fee. Uh, like I said, we are test optional, so we don't need those test scores. We are currently accepting application for the fall semester still, so you can definitely apply. Uh, if you're below our 50 percentile, I would recommend submitting any material that would help support your application. We, um, whether that's a, a personal essay, resume, uh, letter recommendations, anything that you send to us, we'll definitely look at before we place the decision. One of the biggest things is make sure you come and visit us. We do host campus visits Monday, Friday, and Saturday upon request. Those include information session, campus tour, and then meeting with your coach, professor, student, staff, whoever it might be, we can arrange that. Uh, if you can't make it on campus, that's totally fair. Um, you can still do a virtual visit, virtual tour. Uh, but you can also stay tuned to our, our recruitment events, our virtual events. You can go to western.edu forward slash recruitment events to see those events. Uh, but thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. So. Thank you. All right, our next presenter is St. Mary's College of California. And after we hear from St. Mary's College of California, we'll actually bring all of our college representatives back to the screen for some questions. Hey everyone, good evening. My name is Jenna Chirino. I serve as the Associate Director of Admissions for St. Mary's College of California. Um, we are a smaller 2,300 undergraduate student population, um, private liberal arts and LaSallean College in the heart of the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, so our campus is located in Moraga, California, which is about 40 minutes directly east of the city of San Francisco, and we're about 20 minutes east of Berkeley. So we're in a really beautiful spot, absolutely surrounded by the mountains and the rolling hills of the Contra Costa Valley. Um, our undergrads take advantage of our intimate community. Um, students really have a chance to make themselves feel known and feel valued and have their place and make their impact throughout their four years of ex um, experience, whether that's through service or leadership or studying abroad. Um, students definitely 
enjoy the community based um, uh, experience that a small school provides. We are a liberal arts college so at our core of our curriculum students take classes outside of their major so um, liberal arts essentially means freedom from narrow thinking so having the opportunity and the choice to take classes that you are interested in taking to satisfy um, the sciences the humanities the creative arts um, definitely impacts and enhances the interconnectedness of what you're learning throughout all four years um, liberal, the liberal arts also is strongly tied to mentorship and um, faculty connection, uh, which is something that you'll get with our class sizes being about 19 students per class. St. Mary's is a Catholic LaSallian college, so we are um, uh, we were founded by the Christian brothers who derived their work as a Catholic LaSallian school from the work of Jean Baptiste de LaSalle, who was known as a patron saint of teachers and the revolutionary for the way that we see and access education today. Um, about 52% of our students identify as a religion other than Catholic, so it's an incredibly spiritually welcoming community. Um, and notably as well, St. Mary's is a Hispanic serving institution, as well as an API serving institution. Um, almost 60% of our student population identifies as a student of color, BIPOC, or multicultural. Um, and our small size does not negate the fact that we have huge school spirit. St. Mary's has 16 Division I men's and women's sports teams. Um, so our conference um, includes other schools from the West Coast Conference, like Santa Clara, Gonzaga, University of San Francisco, uh, and amongst others. And St. Mary's typically ranks among the top in our conference each year. Um, and we have about 23 club and intramural sports also. So there's a very strong sense of school spirit. Um, very, very active lifestyle, I think, given our area and our student athlete presence. We have 43 academic majors across three schools, the School of Science, the School of Liberal Arts, and the School of Economics and Business Administration. There is no, um, there are no impacted programs, so regardless of the major that you apply with through the common application, you'll be able to start and hit the ground running in that interested program of study your first year. Um, our average class size, as I mentioned, is about 19 students per class. Our largest class is about 30 students. Uh, we don't have the large lecture based environments where um, students really are heavily uh, motivated and heavily encouraged by professors to be involved in the discussion. Um, our teachers are full time professors. We don't have any teaching assistants, so no graduate students teach any of our undergraduate classes, um, which really gives a remarkable exposure to students um, first year, beginning their first year, to have access to not only research, but also connections for internships. Two very unique academic programs that St. Mary's offers. Um, number one, Collegiate Seminar. It is a class that students take every year. It's a one semester class that is an exposure to the great books. Um, so the greatest works of literature, philosophy, history, political theory, art, and science. Everything from Aristotle to Plato to Socrates, Machiavelli, Shakespeare, um, Lao Tzu, Siddhartha, Martin Luther King, and Maya Angelou. Um, and the course, that the, the course is designed so that students are the teachers. Um, so in a Socratic method of teaching uh, and in true Socratic method fashion, the professor that is leading the class is just there facilitating conversation and questioning amongst the students. So you really get to give and bring purpose to learning based on our lived experiences. So very much a how to think, not what to think approach to learning. And January term um, is my favorite thing about St. Mary's. It's a short term in the month of January where students take one class and one class only. Um, there's about 50 different classes that are offered on campus every year, all with a very out of the box style approach to, to their topic, um, but that are very academically baselined. Um, so for example, like the science of cooking, um, the culture of reality trash TV, the legacy of the Beatles, um, uh, dog behavior and dog psychology, those kind of things, but you get to take a class because you're excited to learn from that um, that topic, or you have a professor that you enjoy learning from. Um, so really giving life to learning and bringing us back to the reason why we hopefully all go to college is because we're excited to learn. Um, additionally, there are study abroad and domestic international travel uh, experiences for January term. There's about 25 different courses that go abroad all over the United States and throughout the rest of the world. Um, all are led by professors and take a small group of St. Mary's students, um, which is uh, an amazing way to transform your sense of global citizenship. Touching on the application, um, we have two upcoming deadlines. If you are currently a senior applying for this fall of 2023, uh, you can apply for early action admissions by the deadline of November 1st or regular decision by the deadline of January 15th. 
Um, all we need is the submission of your common application, your high school transcript and letter recommendation. We do not require test scores. We are test optional. Um, and before I conclude, I do want to share that St. Mary's, like most private colleges, awards tremendous amount of financial aid, both need-based and merit-based scholarships. Our merit scholarships are valued up to $29,000 and renewable all four years, automatically awarded based on your GPA. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free. I'm going to put my information in the chat, so go ahead and, and you can hit me up there. Thanks, everyone. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, let's bring all of our college representatives back to the camera and then we will or back to the screen and then let's talk through some questions. So our first question today is what advice would you give someone in the college search process and we'll start off with Oregon Tech. Um, I would definitely say to like do your research. I know that sounds kind of silly, but um, doing your research about, you know, what you're interested in and kind of sticking with that. You know, if you have an interest, um, find different schools that maybe are out of state or in your state that also offer that program. And what programs do they have offer as far as like cost um, that will help you, you know, go to school if that is something that is, you know, important to you. I can go next. Um, speaking on, oh my goodness, there's so much advice that I can give. Um, I kind of concluded with a piece of advice to not let the cost of a college deter you from applying, um, especially considering that so many schools do, uh, do provide students with aid to um, uh, support their education and, and finance their education. But my big piece of advice is um, go into the college search process and college acceptance process, not being afraid. Um, Colleges like St. Mary's colleges, small schools, especially small liberal arts colleges, unless you're applying to a very elite and selective university, we're not in the habit or the routine practice of looking for reasons to deny students. It's actually quite the opposite. We are looking for every single reason that we can to admit you to our college campuses. So don't be afraid to expand on your application, um, really give life and authenticity to it. Yeah, I would say that um, any advice that I would give would just be to, to be open. Um, also to look for universities that align with um, not only like the career aspirations and educational goals that you hold as an individual, but also um, that can help you develop as an individual. Um, when you look at a, at a college, um, I definitely think that you should look at their core values and, and review um, the things that they have to offer when it comes to not only mission statements, but things outside um, of those things as well, just to overall help you grow as an individual. Yeah, so I definitely um, agree with all my colleagues here. Um, my biggest piece of advice for, for me is uh, make sure you visit your top three, top five schools before you make a decision. Um, it's definitely crucial that you do. I mean, you are looking for your next home and you gotta be happy with it. So make sure everything that, that you're interested in, every resource you need to, to thrive at in college, um, everything you're passionate, make sure that school has it. And also make sure you look at scholarships. It is not just about what type of school you're looking for, but also how you, uh, how you can pay for it. So make sure you apply for local scholarships, talk to your high school counselors, and also talk to those financial counselors at those schools and also be in touch with your admissions counselors too. So uh, yeah, so there's more than one piece of advice right there, but the biggest one is make sure you visit your school, so. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna switch the order of the questions a little bit. Uh, so the next question is, what is one myth that you will want to debunk in the college admission process? Yeah, I will go to that one first, I guess. Um, um, I would say um, debunking that um, not everyone should apply for FAFSA. I think it's important for that everyone should apply for FAFSA. Um, like Oregon Tech, for example, we're a four-year public university and um, we literally give points, scholarship points for some students or students who fill out the FAFSA. So I would say that's definitely like one thing I would like to debunk. Yeah, I think for uh, me personally, I think it would be that um, there's a perfect applicant. Um, I don't think that there is one perfect applicant. I think that every student brings a unique um, story um, and that um, there's more than just the, of course, your grades are important and the things that you do in the classroom are important, but those aren't the only thing 
um, that individuals and universities are wanting to learn about you and get to know about you. So um, we take into account, you know, what makes you unique as a person more than just so, you know, what classes are you passing? Yeah, mine aligns with uh, Chris's as well. It's really looking at, you know, the student's application. Um, yes, we do have a criteria. We do have a 50 percent tile of students get admitted. But honestly, we know life happens, at least for, from Western. I, I want to speak for everyone, but uh, we know life happens. Uh, and so sometimes when we look at your GPA, and I know we don't look at test scores, um, but at least in the past we used to, we would look at those two, but then we want to know more information about you. We want to know you know, if you have a learning disability or if something traumatic happened in your life. We want to know that because, like I said, we know life happens. Uh, so we'll look at your overall application before we make a decision, so. And Jenna, what about you? Um, oh gosh, there's so many. Again, I kind of answered this question previously, but so to touch on the essay, um, I mean, just a myth that your essay needs to be a certain standard or a certain, you need to have a certain answer for your essay to appear good to colleges. Um, I mean, to be completely transparent, I enjoy the application and the essay component the most when it comes to reviewing your application. Um, it really allows you the opportunity to share more information with us as college admissions representatives that we're not going to see anywhere else in your application. Um, so don't be afraid to get creative. Don't be afraid to do something different than what your friends are sharing and, and speaking on. Don't be afraid to um, to get out of your comfort zone and, and showcase your true self. Um, I think students that do take risks in their essays um, walk away with the greatest reward in, in my eyes. And those are the ones I remember. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you all for sharing that. All right, so this is a favorite question I know for a lot of college representatives. It's what's one thing, just one thing that you want our attendees to remember about your school? Yes, so one thing, and maybe this might be two things, but we're number one in Oregon for return on investment and number two in the nation for return on investment. Yeah, I think for California Lutheran, it would just be that 97% uh, of our students are actually in their job related field or in a graduate um, school upon nine months of their um, completion of degree. And for me is that, you know, at Western, you definitely, if you are not a member or anything, um, you know, you do build a personal relationship with those professors and your education and your health are the first priority on our campus. St. Mary's is one of the members of the Colleges That Change Lives, which is a consortium of 45 liberal arts colleges across the country that's dedicated to the advancement of a student-centered college search process um, that take a holistic admissions review process really seriously and very much advocate for fit in a student's college choice. Um, and St. Mary's is the only Catholic, only Division I, and only California school out of the 45 other colleges that change lives. Wonderful. Thank you all. That does bring us to the end of our session. Unfortunately, we did not hear from three of our schools. So I invite our attendees to check out their websites, look at their social media and really get to know those colleges. Um, when you exit out of this platform, you will receive a quick survey. We appreciate any feedback that you're able to share with us. Wanna encourage you to keep your eye out for more information on the college launch pad programs, sign up for the sessions, come back and watch the recordings. They'll be available at strivescan.com slash launch. You can grab the contact information from our college representatives out of the chat section. And that is the end of our program. So thank you all so much for joining us and have a great evening.